So I'm here today with award-winning haute couture designer Philip Klein. Philip began his design journey in 1998, establishing a furniture label with designs based on leather and stainless steel. In 2004, he launched his debut fashion range for children, women, and men. The highlights of this collection were military jackets in vintage style embellished with skulls made from Swarovski. In 2010, he opened boutiques in Cannes, Saint-Tropez, Moscow, Vienna, and a few others. Advertisements for Mr. Pline's fashions have starred names such as Lindsay Lohan, Naomi Campbell, Marcus Schenkenberg, David Beckham, Jennifer Lopez, Tamati, Snoop Dogg, Fergie, Iggy Azalea, Megan Fox, and many others. For his fashion and design endeavors, Mr. Pline won the National Brand of the Year Award by GQ Magazine in 2007 and the New Faces in the Fashion Category Award in 2008. In 2016 and 2018, he was named GQ German and British Man of the Year and Brand of the Year, respectively. There are so many more accolades, but our time is limited. So, Philip, thank you for being here. It's so exciting to get to talk to you today. Thank you, man. I'm very excited, too. Now, your, your accomplishments in the fashion industry are legendary, but what's more impressive is how fast your brand has been gaining, gaining steam, especially lately. What does it feel like to have such a successful global brand? And tell us about your journey. Well, um, first of all, it feels very, very exciting to be part of such a great opportunity to have the opportunity in this fashion industry to be there, to be part of it and to, you know, participate. And uh, it's right. We have a lot of things at the moment we are working on. Currently, I started my fashion brand 24 years ago, so quite a while ago. And uh, I'm in this business now for yeah, nearly two decades. What can I say? I mean, it's, it's fashion. You know, when you work in fashion... It's the toughest sport you can you can imagine. I call it a sport because you have to start every year several times from the beginning and reinvent yourself every time, every season. You have to come out with something new, something fresh, something different. You have to excite your customers. You have to excite your community. And that's what I'm doing since 24 years. So it never stops. I, uh, I, sorry. Yeah. I read about that, how you have to at least twice a year, maybe more. What's your inspiration for, for that, for coming up with those ideas? Or is it natural? Yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, sometimes it 90% is natural. Sometimes you have to force yourself, you know, if you run out of ideas. And we are doing up to six collections a year. And then we also have several brands we are we are managing. So at the end, we do 18 collections a year, which is which is a lot. And then in different categories, you know, starting from shoes to ready-to-wear, to eyewear, to watches, to furniture now again. So there's quite a lot which we are designing. I think we design about 10,000 products a year. Amazing. Amazing. Let's take a step back, though, because in 2009, you opened your first commercial showroom. I think it was in Monte Carlo. What, what did that feel like? You know, I mean, um, I was very excited to see my name out there and to see people who believe in me and people who believe in my brand. And I think the biggest graduation you can have as a designer, if you see people who go out there and who buy, they buy your product and they wear your product, I think that is really what it's all about. And also to make people happy and feel excited about it. You know, yes, I mean, thanks for, for supporting. And I can only say, you know, this is the real 
uh, uh, reason why I'm working in this industry because I want to make people happy and get excited about the product which we are designing, which we are selling. And I basically always design for myself. You know, I always think about what would I like to wear, what, you know, what is my preference. I mean, my whole life is already applying. I, I, I haven't worn any other brand, I think, since 15 years. And, and uh, so I really designed for myself in the first place. And then I try to understand my customers in the second place. But first, there's me as a customer. And I'm very critical and very, uh, let's say, you know, uh, hard to please. There you go. I love that. You focused a lot of time and effort outside of the men's area, expanding the women's segment of the brand. What, what moved you in that direction? Um, sorry, one more time. I didn't get the question. Sorry, uh, so you. you've recently moved into women's the women's segment, expanding the women's segment of your brand. And I, I know you don't you don't wear those, <laughs> but I <laughs> wanted to ask you what 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 moved you in that direction? You know, I love women first of all, uh, and uh, <laughs> love women more than men. And second of all, you know, I have I have a girlfriend, and I have I have a sister, I have a mother. And I have I have a lot of people around me who want to buy women clothes, obviously. And and I mean, I I, I design the clothes the way I want to see my girlfriend, you know, wearing when she when we go out for dinner, when we go out for whatever, you know, a shopping spree during the day. I want to make my 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 girlfriend look beautiful and nice. So I started to do women's clothes as well. And it's very important, you know, that you have a clear vision about who is your woman, who is the woman you want to please with your products. And you're right, I don't wear women clothes, but designing for women is as exciting as designing for men. It's just, you know, you look at it in a different way. More of a challenge, I guess. Yeah, it's, you know, women are more difficult than men. I mean, who I'm talking to, you know, like women are extremely difficult. You can do the best to try to understand them. You'll probably never understand the woman, you know. A man is much more easy, you know. He has his pair of denim, he has his t-shirt, his leather jacket, his blazer. But a woman has so much more options in the fashion that she can wear a skirt, a dress. She can wear leggings, she can wear, you know, a, a jumper, whatever. You know, women have so many more options and that makes it even more difficult. I'm in an industry. And, and, and they never know what to wear. You know, every morning when my girlfriend wakes up, she doesn't know what to wear. So, so you know, a man, you know, you wake up, you need two minutes and you're dressed up. But the girl, she changes five times her outfit before she even leaves the house. We're, we're in an industry here that's 65% female, so no comment on how difficult women can or can't be. I'll, I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> Let's talk about your move into eyewear now. What is your vision for the eyewear segment, pun intended? You know, um, when we started to work with Dirigo, I got really excited. I visited the factory. I visited the production place where all the magic happens. And, and it's really astonishing to see the quality and the laugh to detail which they put into every product and this is what i wanted to do you know when you when you are like philip Lai, we are brand who has now so many products in different categories whenever we start a new journey for example like eyewear i want to have a product which sticks out because i don't want the people to buy my product just because of my brand i want them to buy the product first of all because of the product itself so there are a lot of brands out there they just put their name on everything right and they right. just want to make money with the name. I think it's really important that we deliver value for money. And, and what does that mean? That the product itself is so um, strong and so, let's say, convincing that the name on top is secondary. All right. So I really, I really love product, man. I'm a product guy. And, and I like to be in the factories. I like to see the materials. I like to be into it and I like to learn and I like to study it. And you know, when it comes to eyewear, it's something very, very special because you know, you can wear a pink t-shirt, you can wear something crazy, but when it comes to your face, people are very conscious about yes. what they put in their face, right? So, right. so you wear this really inside your face and, and you have to really um, love it. And, and so you wanna be crazy, but at the same time, not, the, the majority doesn't want to be too crazy. So for me, it was important to have a wearable product, something which is which is which delivers quality and which delivers also a message. And and so I think when you look at our eyewear, there's so much detail, so much, uh, but also visible detail. Because most of the time, you know, when you work with a designer, they get excited about certain things. But I always say, listen, the consumer they don't know the difference. They don't see the difference between this and that, it looks the same for them. So you have to bring out really the, the, the highlights and you have to work on them. That was the challenging part for me in the beginning to understand how the eyewear business works. 
And uh, I think we are on a good track. I think the first collection came out really nice. I got a lot of compliments. Everybody's very excited about it. And and in the first place, I love it. My girlfriends love it. And that's already that's already a big thing. And you touched on something very important. When you're in a business meeting, when you're socializing, people are looking at your face, even if you have the nicest clothes in the world on and you have some clunk or eyeglasses or something that's not attractive or flattering, that's what they're going to pay attention to. And, and they may not know what it is about you that was wrong, but it, 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 it could be that. No yes. And, and you know, you know, you have to also understand that we all say we are fashion, but most of the people are not. We are not fashion. Most of the people were black. They were gray, white, blue. You know, people are not so experimental. They know they might say, wow, that's amazing. But would they really wear it? Would they really buy it? That's a big challenge here. Yeah. You want to be cool. You want to be fashion at the same time. You have to be careful that you don't, you know, we call it the right amount of wrong, the right amount of wrong. If you're too much over the edge, it can go directly the opposite. But if you're at the edge, you're cool as, as hell. Excellent. Tell us a little bit more about what led to your choice of Derigo to partner with. You know, like when I started to 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 decide to go into this uh, eyewear business, I wanted to understand who is the leader in this industry. And, you know, Derigo is a company which has so much history. I mean, it's a family business. It has been around since so many years and, and decades. It's a very traditional company with a lot of heritage and knowledge. And this is when it comes to, you know, quality and it comes to, to workmanship and craftsmanship. You better work with somebody who knows what they are doing. And, and you know, this is why I wanted to work with the Rigo because they deliver all these attributes and they bring into this partnership all what is necessary. They have the know-how but they also have the, the distribution power and moreover, they have the production facilities. And, and so they have all in one. And I think that's a very explosive partnership, you know, because I think I contributed to their team quite a lot of, you know, Novita, because what is a good thing is, uh, Alan, is when you start uh, something new, when you start a new journey and you are not particular from this industry, so you go in there like a virgin, right? You see the things with different eyes. And that can be very eye-opening for the people on the other side. Because, you know, when you're in this eyewear business since decades, since more many years, you, you get a tunnel view, you know? You just see this, you know? You always, and, and you don't see anymore, you know, what's happening, you know, around. So I think that was a very interesting uh, uh, approach. And I really have to say that when we started to work together, um, also with the design team, they were really open-minded. They really tried to realize all of the ideas and, and they guided me through the whole process. Excellent, excellent. Now, what's because, the one... You know, Alan, Alan, the last thing is, what's important is, you know, when I sell a product with my name on it, I have to make sure that there's also my name in it, right? So, is, as I said, I'm not just a person, you know, who wants to put his name on something. I want to make sure that where I put my name on, it reflects and represents myself, my ideas, and my brand. So everybody who works with me knows that they have a hard time to convince me and, and because I'm very challenging, you know. I'm, you know, I don't look at the price in the first place. I look at the quality, as I said, product and detail. And, and you know, this is what I liked about the Rigo. They never made a cut on quality and design. While other suppliers would say, you know, that's too expensive. We cannot do that. You know, that's not, that's not commercial. We cannot sell this and, and so on because they see always the problems, right? But, but they were really open-minded and they pushed it even further because quality-wise, I have to say that I've never seen something like that. You know, you came up with the name for your biography there. Don't put your name on it, put your name in it <laughs> in yeah. case you're looking. <laughs> yeah, if you have I mean, the right one. So that, that, that's, that's the point. If I, wouldn't, you know, if I wouldn't go for it, I don't want anybody else to go for it. And, and I don't believe in it. I don't want it out there. Excellent. Now, can you name one, I know you named a few things, but what's the one thing that differentiates your brand from other luxury brands? Everything. Could you pick one, the biggest one? Myself. <laughs> there you go. Well, right. well let, me, let me explain it very quickly. You know, mm -hmm. like we are born to be different. You know, while all the other brands out there, they are like dinosaurs in the industry. They've been around since a hundred years, longer some, sometimes. They are most of them, they're big organizations. They belong to big groups uh, with a lot of money behind. So we are really the underdog in this fashion industry. We are the small one who, who the small fish in the, in the shark tank. 
and and we are very comfortable being in this position, right? And I can tell you that, that the big sharks mainly already have swallowed most of the small fishes around them, and they couldn't catch us so far because we are quite fast in our moves and 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 un, unpredictable, I would say, right? And that makes us different. And you know, that's the only chance for me to survive in the shark tank to be faster and to be unpredictable. Otherwise, they would have already swallowed us because the big sharks don't want anyone else na near them, right? Because they are um, basically um, not willing to give any shares away. Every sunglasses we sell, we are stealing some market shares from another luxury brand. You have to know that. So every euro we make on, on Pline is a euro we are taking away from somebody else. And like in every big industry, the big ones, they, they want to protect their pizza, right? They want to share their pizza. And, and uh, as more people come to the dinner and as more slices you have to give away, everybody gets very protective, right? So, so, so I mean, apart from this, most of the brands nowadays, they're all operated by big management boards. Most of the designers today, they're already retired, sold their businesses, or they're really too old to be really involved in the daily business. So most of the brands you find today, they are brands without a face. Or they have designers which come and go, you know, they take a designer for five years, give a refresh, and then, you know, somebody else is next, right? So, so at this brand, we have a consistency, which is myself, and there's a face behind, which this is how most of the luxury brands started, right? You had Gianni Versace, he's not around anymore. You had, you know, Giorgio Armani, who's not really present as much as he was in the beginning, because now he's probably also in an age where he cannot be involved as much as he would like to be. And that makes obviously a difference. And then we are very innovative and we are very, you know, when you have, when you're the sole owner and the designer at the same time, you're willing to take risks. You not only evaluate everything on profit margins, you do it because, you know, you like it or you love it or we have the balls to do it, you know, and, and others, you know, cannot do it the way we do. And that's, that's also important. That's why yeah. we're here. And the freedom to do it as well. Yeah. I mean, we call that rock and roll, right? That's the rock and roll. The rock and roll is this lifestyle, you know, to do what you want to do and, and not to always think about twice what would other people say. We can, we don't always have to be politically correct uh, because we are not Coca-Cola, right? If you're Coca-Cola, you cannot make a, a wrong move, but we are whiskey cola. So we are for the 1%. Right. And when it comes to initiatives that you, you are in, very into diversity and sustainability. That's a core value for you. Tell us about your positioning on those and other socially responsible initiatives that you're involved in. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was the first brand, the first brand, I would say eight or nine years ago, who did a black casting during Milan Fashion Week. Even before Black Lives Matter came up and whatever, we were the first fashion brand in the industry in Milan during Fashion Week who had an all black casting. And we did many things like this. You know, I had models uh, without without feet, people uh, who lost their feet, you know, walking on the catwalk with the prothese and, and so on. And we did many things, you know, in order to support uh, minorities and, and minority groups in this company and as my brand. And, and uh, you know, because we are underdogs and we believe in underdogs and we believe people who are different and we want to support that. And we, we did that from the very beginning and we keep on doing it. And as I said, we are born to be different and we are not afraid to be looked at somebody different. And that's why we engage exactly for this reason with people who are different and, and who are not the norm or who seem to be different. And uh, yeah, we are very open-minded, you know, we support everything what goes into in the new direction. And uh, we're very excited also to do this in the future. That's great. That's great. We need more more entrepreneurs like that. A um, couple more questions. Your promo videos are a, a what did I just see moment. Wow. Very creative. What is? Tell me what the symbolism is, of the tongue and flame is in that short video you have. The tongue and flame. The tongue and flame. Which tongue and flame? Which video are you talking about? Which one? On, on Instagram, you mean? Uh? There's so many yes. videos. The yeah, it was on Instagram. Which one? Which one? Which one? Uh, I, saw, I saw it on YouTube. It was on YouTube. Oh man, I don't know which one. Okay. Because we do so much content. I know. I don't know. Well, how about uh, we could skip that one? But how about the black ink video? Do you do you remember that one? The what? The what? Sorry, say it again. Black, the one where they're pouring black ink over a guy's face. The eyewear category. The eyewear campaign. Um, that, that's me. Video. That's my face, man. Oh, is it? <laughs> me and Megan Fox. 
Oh, okay, called, that, that's what that is. Go, go, tell us a little bit about the, the concept and the creative behind okay, it. The, kind of the concept was, I mean, we were shooting Megan Fox and myself. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, that's a very nice thing because I'm modeling my own brand. That's the first time I actually modeled my own brand. Well, I did it once in the pandemic. When the pandemic started and there was no fashion shows anymore and it was really hard to get models to come over to Milan and model. So, and, and people got really scared. Everybody was locked up at home. We thought it's a nice message if I would model my own clothes and we did it in the studio because we couldn't get any people, right? Because everybody, you know, lockdown was really hard to create content and you couldn't involve too many people and too many models. So I modeled all my collection and, but this was a uh, fashion show 2020. And now I did it again for the eyewear and I did it together with Megan Fox, who is the female part, very strong woman, independent woman. She's the mother, she has kids. Now she's newly divorced, has a new boyfriend, is repositioning herself in the industry, extremely successful. That's really, uh, you know, a power, power woman. And, uh, and uh, so we had this campaign, it was shooted by my friend, Stephen Klein, who is really one of the most, let's say, I would say, uh, successful fashion photographers out there. I'm a big fan of Stephen Klein's work. I worked with many, many photographers of the industry, but he's really my favorite because he's, I call him like the professor of photography. He's a guy, you know, he, when he gets a job, he wants to get the job done and he's not finished until it's not really 100%. You know, with him, you start and sometimes you finish at five in the morning because he doesn't get tired. He doesn't look at the time. He wants to get the best out of everything. And uh, so we worked on this concept for the eyewear. We wanted to do something different. I told him, look, I want to do something which is interruptive and which makes people stop. And when they look at the campaign and, and people like, you know, want to catch the people's attention. In the world of social media nowadays, you see so much pictures, so much content. You know, you see millions of pictures. When the day you wake up, you go on your social media and you see so much content. So it's really hard to make people stop and say, what the fuck is this, right? So, um, and that's what advertising is about. We want people to catch their attention. So actually we were planning to make something really weird. Okay, Megan was supposed to spit in my mouth. <laughs> and uh, but then because of COVID, and we said it's too sexual, you know, we don't do that, you know, it's really like so, so, so then, you know, her boyfriend, uh, Machine Gun Kelly, might gonna get, you know, pissed off, she wasn't sure, you know, it's gonna be jealous. And and so we said, okay, you know what, let's put something over my face. And and so we put this black liquid in a glass of champagne, she put it over my face, which is very, you know, also unexpected and looked really cool and a little bit weird. A little bit like sexual fetish, you know. So we wanted to do something different, right? Yeah, very, very incredible. We'll try and get a link up in our community so people can see what we're referring to. Last question: Tell us about your son. Well, I have my son lives in Brazil. My son is uh, with his mother. My son um, is uh, growing up very fast. He's nine years old now. He speaks perfectly English. He was, uh, you know, that they moved away from my from my family. Uh, she moved away from me when when he was one year old. And then we, I had a hard time to get a hold of her and my son, which was a very difficult time for me for, for a period of time, four years. I was really suffering a lot until we sorted everything out. Now I'm, you know, I'm really happy to, to be back in his life and to have my son back. Now I'm getting a second child. My, my girlfriend is pregnant. I'm very excited. I'm going to have uh, a baby, baby boy coming, coming out there. He has a, the coolest name ever. His name is going to be Rocket Halo Ocean. And uh, Rocket is going to rock uh, for sure my, my life. And I'm very excited this time, you know, to, to, to experience it in a different way than the first time. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a proud father. I'm happy to become father again. And I think kids are so important for us because they are the future and, and we live for them. And, and, and uh, we try to make this world a better place, even though it seems hard sometimes for our kids. So, yeah. Well, incredible. Congratulations on I'm a father of two sons. So I feel that very much so. Uh, yeah, but anyway. My girlfriend's son is going to be a girl. And I thought, okay, you know what? Who knows? You know, anyway, I'm, I'm happy either way. But she was so convinced it's going to be a girl because she has three sisters. And then we didn't know. And then it became became a boy. And then she got really shocked. She said, I don't know what to do. I don't know anything about soccer. I don't know anything about that. Don't worry. We're going to work this out. I, I would have loved the girl too. I guess I'll have to wait. I'm, I'm telling both of my sons, I need a granddaughter, okay? I need a granddaughter. <laughs> That's when that'll happen for me. Well, anyway, listen, thank you so much, first of all, for entering the eye care industry. We really need an innovator and someone with the passion and, and drive and creativity that, that you bring to all your other projects. 
And thank you for partnering Dorigo. They are a very highly respected company that, that, that I admire. And I admire the people that run that company and what they've done over all the years in fashion and eyewear. Have, and you, I have you visited the factory yet? Say that again? Have you visited the headquarters already? I've not had the pleasure, but I'm looking forward to that at some point. You have to do it because this is where the magic happens. And that is what I think is really interesting, especially for you to see it. How, you know, I mean, you know, when you see a product as a final consumer, um, you don't, cannot even imagine the work which is behind creating this kind of details and this product and the challenging sometimes. And I have to say one more thing. I mean, when I started to work on this project, I understood very quickly and easily that the iron industry, even though it's very linked to fashion, is a very conservative industry very conservative and traditional, which is good. And sometimes also a little bit old fashioned and, and especially when it comes to their distribution and the people in the industry. So I thought that is really interesting because they actually sell fashion products, but at the same time, they are so traditional in many ways. And I try to break a little bit the ice. And I think also with our campaigns or the communication with the product and everything on top, I think there's a lot we can do and we can add a little bit of spice. And, you know, one more thing, Alan, you know, nobody needs another eyewear brand or another product because to be very honest, there's enough product out there for the next 1000 years. So if you really go out there and you want to make something, you should come out there with something different and make a difference or at least try to aim to make something different. Because if you want to just copy or do whatever everybody has done already, you should better not even start. I think the only thing is to contribute with something different. Otherwise, who needs another brand doing eyewear? Nobody does. Well, you made a great decision partnering with Dorigo because out of the large manufacturers, they are definitely one of the ones who steps out of that box. So sounds like it's a great fit. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say to the audience? I mean, what can I say? I mean, uh, um, blind is the best, fuck the rest. What do we want to say? I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, that's make, great. Take your choice. You should go out there. You should check out the eyewear, which we have done. I'm very proud of it. And, you know, I think what is really important is that I really designed every little product, every little detail, and I really put my name on it. I believe in it. And, and, and uh, I think that makes a big difference. And there's a lot of authenticity in this brand and in their product. And I hope that this is what the people we are talking to can confirm when they get to see the product. and have it definitely at the end in their hands. Great. Well, we all look for big things from all of your lines moving forward. We're glad to get to know you and learn more about you and have a great, great year and uh, look forward to our next connection. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Ciao.